Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Electricity. We learned up to Ohm's law. We will continue the lesson in this video. So when we learned about Ohm's law, we found that the potential difference V is proportional to I and when we are making a constant out of it, it is R which is the resistance. Now what is the unit of uh, uh, resistance? It is Ohm, right? Whereas potential difference is volt and I can, current is ampere. So volt per ampere is the ohm. When do we say that resistance is 1 ohm? So resistance is said to be 1 ohm when 1 volt of potential difference is applied which allows uh, 1 ampere of current to uh, flow through it. So uh, this is the ohm's law and now we will see what are the factors on which the resistance of a conductor uh, depend. There are actually four factors. The first one is the length of the conductor. So when the length of the conductor is increasing, the resistance also will increase. For example, suppose this is a wire through which electrons are passing. And we learned that resistance means the opposition to the flow of electrons. So uh, electrons are uh, experiencing a kind of opposition. So imagine if it has to travel double the length, then naturally the rate of opposition also will increase because initially it had to reach only till there with uh, opposition or resistance. Now overcoming that resistance, it has to travel again further. So naturally the resistance also will be high. So length and resistance are directly proportional. So we can say L is proportional to R. Okay. Now the second factor on which the resistance of a conductor depends is the area of the conductor. So area is represented as A. For example, this is a wire. You know that this area is more than this. Suppose this is X, maybe this is 2X doubled, right? So you know that whenever there is less space, the, the flow is not that easy, right? It is congested. But if you have more space, then the flow is easy. Imagine a narrow road through which so many vehicles are going in uh, one direction. So we know that it is very congested space. But imagine if it is a highway with uh, many lines are there, several lines, so that the vehicles can go easily. The same number of vehicles, right? So here also when area increases, it, the resistance is decreased because that inner space is there to move. So we can say that area increases, resistance decreases. So are they proportional? No, they are inversely proportional. So we can say that R is inversely proportional to area. So if length is increased, resistance will increase. If area is increased, resistance will decrease. Now the third factor on which the resistance of a conductor depends is the nature of the material. So we know that suppose if I take a silver wire, Okay, another wire of same length and area made up of a metal iron. So we know that if you check their conductivity, uh, the silver offers less resistance to the flow of electrons. So the current can pass through easily. So it's a very good conductor or the best conductor. Whereas when it comes to iron, it is not the same. So the amount of opposition they are offering is their nature. So silver, wherever I take, the silver will show uh, less resistance, but iron will have more resistance than silver, so the current cannot flow easily. So the nature of the material, it is otherwise called a resistivity, which is actually a characteristic of that uh, material which we are taking or a metal which we are taking, and uh, it is not depending on length or area. With this small length, if you take, or a long one, we, if you take, or a thick wire, if you take, or a thin wire, if you take, if, what it is made of is that is its characteristic okay it has its own kind of resistivity or the conductivity we can say now the last point is temperature so if we change the temperature it will definitely affect the uh, resistance of a conductor but now we are not talking about the temperature in Ohm's law also we learned temperature remains a constant what happens so as of now we are going to consider two parameters only one length and the second is area of cross section. If I combine these two equations together, that is R is proportional to L and R is proportional to 1 by A, that means R is inversely proportional to area, we can say that R is proportional to L by A. We are combining these two. 
So if I want to remove this proportionality sign, I will add a constant. So here I am adding R is equal to rho into L upon A. So here we are adding a constant. This is a Greek letter. It is from, uh, name is rho. R H O rho. It is pronounced. So this rho into length by area. So this rho is called a resistivity. I told that is the nature of the material. It will not change with the length or it will not change with the area like resistance do. But it will be a same for a material whatever length or whatever area we take. So it depends from metal to metal but not depends upon the uh, dimensions. Okay. Sometimes in that examination they will ask a wire of uh, X resistivity is uh, increased uh, doubled its length. So what will be the new resistivity? So if you don't uh, read the question carefully you may calculate accordingly. Don't do that. Resistivity if asked it will not change. If I want to find out the unit of rho, rho is equal to I can say that R into A upon L. So we know that R is ohm, A is meter square resistant uh, area the length is in meter these are all SI units so what are we getting the unit of uh, rho it is ohm meter so the unit of resistivity is ohm meter so unit of resistance is ohm unit of resistivity is ohm meter so we learn uh, this is the fifth equation for us so the first equation was 2 is equal to Ne then I is equal to current is equal to Q upon T then we learn potential difference V is equal to um, W by work done by charge. Then we learn Ohm's law V by I is equal to R. But in that we learn the difference also. V by I is equal to R means R is equal to V I or I is equal to V by R. Then this is the next equation R is equal to rho into L upon A. So we will see some important concepts in this regard. That is when length is increased or a area is increase uh, or decrease what happens okay so suppose this is the first wire with the length l and area of cross section a so if that is the case r is equal to rho into l upon a suppose the same area i am keeping okay but i am doubling the length of the wire so now what happened to the l l became 2 l Whereas area is remaining the same. So now when I write I can put it R dash. That is rho into 2 times L by A. So if I take 2 out. Then rho into L upon A. That is 2 times. So rho into L upon A is the R. So R dash is equal to 2R. Means when I increase the length or double the length. What also increase resistance also doubled. But we didn't change the area at all. Okay. Now, if I reduce the length, same area I am keeping. If I am reducing the length, L length is L by 2. Okay. Area is remaining the same. So, in this case, R dash is equal to rho into L by 2 by A. This is rho into L into A by 2. So, we can take 1 by 2 out rho into L by A, this is R. So what is R is equal to, one by, R dash is equal to 1 by 2 R. So in this case, when we half the area, resistance also became half. New resistance is R dash. This also reduced to half. In all these cases, we did not disturb the area. Okay. Now we will see how area changes what happens. So now I am doubling the area. The first wire is our reference, doubling the area, but length is the same. So what is the length? L. But area becomes 2A. So I can write R dash is equal to rho into L upon 2A. So this is 1 by 2 I am taking out rho into L by A. So the new resistance R dash, this is R, right? So new resistance R dash is half of R. Okay, so when we reduce the area, resistance became half. Now, if I am decreasing the area, okay, the same wire, I decrease the area. So, length is L, but area is only A by 2. So, now what is it? R dash is equal to rho, rho into L upon A, upon, by, A by 2. 
right? So it is equal to rho into 2n by a. So I am taking 2 out, 2 into rho into l by a. So this is r. So what is r dash? r dash is equal to 2r. So when I increase the, decrease the area, the resistance increase. So we know that when we are doubling the length without changing area, the resistance also becoming double. When we reduce the length or we made the length half without reducing the area, resistance also becoming half. When we increase the area, double the area without changing length, the resistance became half because that is inversely proportional. In this case, we halved the area, then the resistance became double because of inversional, uh, because they are inversely proportional. Now we are going to see a bit different conditions. See here again we have a wire with a length L and area of cross section. So R is equal to rho into L upon A. Okay. Whereas the new situation, what is the condition? R dash we can write. R dash is equal to rho into, okay. Here the same wire is stretched or pulled. Okay, so if you are getting these words in the question, you have to be little careful. That means, initially I took one wire of this length. Later I took another wire of the double length but the same area. There were two different wires. But now the condition is not the same. I had a wire with a L and area of cross section A. Now I am pulling the same wire to make it double the length. So when I am pulling it to make the length double, definitely thickness will decrease. Because same wire is pulled. So it will become thinner. Right. So here when we are increasing the length by pulling or stretching. The length is doubling but area will naturally will become half. So we know that the new one will be rho into 2L upon A by 2. So this will become rho into 4L by A. If I take the 4 out. 4 into rho into L by A. Rho in L by A is R. So, R dash is equal to 4 R. So, here when the length is doubled, the resistance became 4 R because area became half. It's very easy to remember. When we double the length, resistance will double. When we half the area also, resistance will double. 2 times doubling, so 4 times it became. The next condition is, here the same wire, we are folding all the wire. That means the same wire is folded or doubled on it. We say another word, doubled on it. Means I am not taking another wire. Suppose this was the first wire. I am folding it so that length becomes half whereas the area will become doubled. Because I am folding the same wire or doubling the same wire. So in this case, new R will be R dash will be rho into length became half area became 2a. Okay. So this will become rho into L by 2 into 1 by 2a. Because 2 by a means a, numerator, a denominator is 1. So reciprocal multiplication. So if I take this 2 into 2, 4. 1 by 4 if I take out I will get rho into L by a. This is nothing but r. So r dash is equal to 1 by 4 r or I can say r by 4. So here when I decrease or half the length, the resistance is decreasing 4 times. Why? Because length is become half. So resistance also became half and area doubled. That way also resistance became half. Now I will tell you a few points told in your NCRT book that is about resistivity. So the resistivity of the metals and alloys are usually 10 to the power of minus 8 to 10 to the power of minus 6 ohm meter. So you know that that is a very low value. As a result they are good conduct because resistivity is less means conductivity is high. Resistance is also less. Okay. Whereas when we come to insulators like rubber, glass etc. Their resistivity is from 10 to the power of 12 to 10 to the power of 17 ohm meter. That is a very high value. So since the resistivity is high, resistance is also high and the Opposition to the flow of electrons is high. So, they are acting as insulators. And I told resistance depends upon length, area, 
resistivity or nature of the material and temperature whereas resistivity does not change with the length or area but both resistance and resistivity can change with the change in temperature. Which one we can use for making conductors? Metals, right? But usually more than metals, we metals and alloys are used but alloys have higher resistivity than the component metals. You know, alloy means what? It is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or metal and non-metal. So the individual metals present in them have a resistivity but alloy will have more resistivity than that. So alloys are used for making resistors or elements in heating devices. Why? Because one, it has high resistivity because um, of that it will not oxidize or burn immediately. Uh, these two are the reasons. One, high resistivity. Second, it, uh, it does not burn immediately when the temperature increases. The same way inside the bulb and all we use a filament and that filament is made up of a metal called a tungsten. Its boiling point is very high, melting. Its melting point is very high, 3380 degrees Celsius. And for conducting or transmission of electricity, we use metals with a low resistivity like a silver, copper and aluminium. But silver being very expensive, we don't use much but we depend on copper and aluminium for that purpose. Because their resistivity is low, so they are good conductors of electricity. We learned this diagram of circuit and we found that the resistors are connected to the circuit and the resistors, uh, the resistance uh, will depend upon the uh, potential difference and the current. But different gadgets that we are using may have different resistors in it because some will have high uh, resistivity is required for some it is less. So depending upon that we have to arrange them in different ways. So usually we arrange the resistors in two forms. First one is called a series arrangement. Second one is called a parallel arrangement. So we will see how they are different from each other. So series means suppose if I draw one uh, circuit. This is the battery. It is connected to a three resistors. This is the first resistor. This is the second resistor. This is the third resistor. Now the switch is on and here then we can say that suppose this is the first resistor R1, this is R2 and this is R3 and the direction of current from positive to negative. So this kind of arrangement where all are connected in a single wire then this connection is called a series connection. Okay, so here wire is not changing or wire is not crossing or two wires are not joining end to end. Imagine you are all standing in a line and you are all holding your hands each other. So single line, you are, there is no interruption of the line, it is all completely joined. Okay, so that kind of arrangement, we start from here, the same wire is going without any connection or uh, 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 bifurcation. So that is called a series. Whenever we are using series connection, the same, suppose here the voltage we are giving using the battery, but the current flowing through will be same at any point if you check. Any point on the conductor current will be the same. I remains same. That is the peculiarity or characteristic of series connection. So if you connect to a series connection, all resistors will be getting equal current. Okay. Whereas the potential difference that we are giving will be divided among these three depending upon their resistance. Suppose this has maximum resistance maybe uh, this is x, this is 2x, this is 3x. So which has maximum resistance 3x. So maximum potential difference this will take less than that this will take less than that this will take. So potential difference will be divided between these three. So how many resistors are there? Those many we are told. So V1 plus V2 plus V3 whereas all will have the same current I. Okay. So now if you try to um, use Ohm's law here. According to Ohm's law, suppose if I want to see the total resistance present in a conductor when it is connected in series. So V is equal to I R V now. Right? I R I am writing S here for series. So V1 we can write as I R1 plus instead of this V I am writing I R2 then third one 
IR3. Hope you know how we got IR because Ohm's law V by I is equal to R. Cross multiplying this V is equal to IR. This formula we took. Okay. So instead of V, we are substituting IR and I RSI out series connection R1 first resistor, R2 second and R3. Why am I not putting I1, I2 and I3? Because I remains the same for all. So there is no change. So since I is same, I am removing I. So if I take only series, uh, that is R1 plus R2 plus R3. So if I want to find out the total resistance in a series connection, I just have to add this. For Suppose in this case it will become X plus 2X plus 3X. That will be 6X. Right. So, suppose this is 10 ohm, this is 20 ohm, this is 30 ohm, then I just have to add 10 plus 20 plus 30, so I will get 60 ohm. Clear? So, this is the series connection. But you can see that the total resistance that we got in this entire circuit, if asked, we have to add everything. So, the total resistance is higher than the individual resistances. Hope that is clear. So, this is the... Um, definition so this is how we prove or we are deriving the equation for connect uh, resistors connected in series now look at this circuit here also three resistors are there but their arrangement is little different instead of one connected to the other all three of them are connected to a same point okay so this kind of arrangement is not continuous but separately they are connected that is called a parallel arrangement so in this parallel arrangement we can see that these are the two points where all three are connected. So it is opposite to series. In series we saw current remains the same but here potential difference remains the same. Why? Because all these conductors, suppose this is first conductor, this is second, this is third, all have the same ends, right? So the same potential difference is available to the ends. That is what is given here. Suppose here we are giving 6 volt, each one will get 6 volt. Potential difference equally distributed to them. They all will get the same because their ends are connected to the same potential difference. Whereas, what is different? I is different. I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Because when current is coming through this, current will flow differently through different systems and then come back. So, current is the total of the individual currents. Again, according to Ohm's law, I is equal to V by R. We have learned so we can substitute that here V by R, I am writing P here because P for parallel is equal to V by R1 plus V by R2 plus V by R3. Okay, so R1 and R2, R3 are different whereas V remains the same that's why I didn't write V1, V2, V3. Now I can just write uh, this V as 1, so 1 by RP is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. Okay, so suppose this is 10 ohm, this is 10 ohm, this is 10 ohm. How will I find out? 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10 plus 1 by 10. So that is 3 by 10. So that is 1 by RP. So RP will be 10 by 3. Oh. So this is how we find out a parallel connection. But here we can see that the total resistance is less than the individual resistance. So if you want to get more resistance, you have to arrange them in series. If you want to get less resistance, you have to arrange them in parallel. Okay, so um, if it is the same resistance, usually what happens is, uh, suppose this these two resistance are same, the value will be half of it. Then if three are same, you have to just divide them by three. Okay, so that's how you can see. So if you have to see the equation, series means uh, just to add the resistors, whereas if it is parallel means add the reciprocal of the individual resistors. Hope you understood all the concepts I discussed today very well. If so, you have to give me your valuable suggestions in the comment box. That will give me a lot of feedback from your side which will enable me to uh, plan my lessons accordingly and make it more efficient. Uh, so and also if uh, you like the videos please share with the with your friends also and subscribe to my channel and please give a like thank you for watching biology my passion